It's my pleasure to officially welcome you to Pokemon Go Fest 2020. And for those of you joining us again, welcome back. I stand here at the gardens at Lake Merritt in Oakland, where many of you in the trainer community have gathered in the past to play and connect with one another. This site is actually where we hosted some of our very first events in the early days of Niantic. And so it's fitting that we kick off here. It holds a special place in our history of serving the local communities where we live and play. I also want to take a moment to say how much it means to us that you've embarked on this journey with us and shared in the adventure with Pokemon Go. Thank you, trainers, both new and veteran. We know that many of you look forward to this moment year after year, and we look forward to bringing you another amazing Pokemon Go Fest experience. You will notice that Go Fest looks a little different this year. We've created a completely reimagined global event that's fully virtual while preserving the real feeling of community you've come to enjoy and expect out of our live events. We're bringing more people together than ever before at GoFest this year. Trainers are joining from 110 countries and regions around the world. It's truly phenomenal to see the shared passion for Pokemon Go connect so many people across geographical distances, different languages, and cultures. Like many of the features we've enabled in the core game over the past months, GoFest is designed with many more ways to maximize the overall experience through unique gameplay. I'm particularly excited about the rotating virtual habitats that we're introducing for the first time this year. At Niantic, we believe that local communities can be a massive force for positive change. We're excited to be working with Pokemon Go trainers to identify your favorite small and local businesses so they can be featured in Pokemon Go. Through your support, we've received over 15,000 nominations of local businesses, and that number continues to grow. We're gonna spend the next couple of weeks looking through those nominations to narrow down to the final 1,000 small businesses to be featured. These are important first steps in a long road of recovery ahead and we thank you for all of your efforts so far. We also look forward to donating more than $5 million in support of black creators and nonprofit organizations in the US. We remain committed to making a positive impact in our communities. I'm currently playtesting GoFest and I'm excited about what's in store for trainers. Here's a sneak peek of the Pokemon you'll be able to encounter at GoFest. And lastly, I'm excited about the brand new Niantic Merchandise Store we recently launched. I encourage you to check it out if you haven't already. It's another way to showcase your Niantic spirit anytime. We encourage you to get out, enjoy the summer, and explore safely outdoors. There are hidden stories in our neighborhoods just waiting to be discovered. Create memorable adventures out in the real world and stay connected with friends and fellow trainers by sharing your Pokemon Go experiences virtually. There's never been a more important time for it. We hope that you enjoy Pokemon Go Fest as much as we enjoyed creating it. Let's play. Liz, Manager of Community and Social at Niantic for Pokemon Go. Hi, I'm Laura. I'm a senior game designer on Pokemon Go. When planning Pokemon Go Fest, one of the most important things that we want to do is bring trainers together in the real world to experience playing Pokemon Go together. Go Fest is full of so many amazing activities, from special research to special Pokemon to catch. We're introducing a new feature called Global Challenge Arena, where you're going to work with other trainers to beat special challenges. And if you do it fast enough, you're going to be able to unlock special bonuses during that hour. When I think about Pokemon Go Fest, I think about trainers traveling from around the world to come together in one park to trade, encounter Pokemon, and what you're doing right now, complete special research from Professor Willow. Every year we work with our partner at the Pokemon Company to choose some of our favorite Pokemon and Pokemon that we think trainers from across the globe are going to love. This year, there might even be a special mythical Pokemon who's going to be extra excited to see how victorious you are. One of my very personal favorite features, special research, is returning to Pokemon Go Fest this year. Trainers, you've guessed it. Professor Willow needs your help uncovering a strange phenomenon that's happening in your area that we think might be related to a special mythical Pokemon. Actually, speaking of special research, that's something that Laura and I work on very closely because that's narrative and game design. 
While Liz and her team are hard at work on the narrative, the game design team is busy working on figuring out what fun activities you'll do during the story. From sending gifts to friends, catching Pokemon, and maybe even a few mysteries this year, you're going to be hard at work helping the professor. It's going to be a blast. It's an extremely collaborative process that we then submit to the Pokemon company to make sure we get their stamp of approval. There's going to be all sorts of fun things from trainers across the globe to participate in, but it really takes a whole team to pull this together. Game design and narrative are actually two small pieces of the entire Pokemon Go Fest experience. As Laura said earlier, there are many teams that put in hard work to make sure that this event is a success. Let's hear from them. Hi, my name's Lena. I'm a technical artist on the design team in Pokemon Go. Hi, my name is Kevin, and I'm a technical program manager at Niantic. Hi, I'm Paul. Uh, I'm a UX designer here at Niantic working on Pokemon Go. I'm Daphne. I'm a technical lead slash manager and senior software engineer on Pokemon Go. Hi, my name's Doc, and I'm a product manager at Niantic. Hi, I'm Veronica. I'm the product marketing manager for Pokemon Go. I'm Jessica. I'm a QA lead on Pico. I'm Marcus. I'm a QA lead on Pico. Hi, I'm Kelsey, and I'm a designer on the marketing team. Hey, everybody. I'm Errol, your social media manager for Pokemon Go. My name is Kathy. I work in the operations department for Pokemon Go. Hi, I'm Anna. I'm a member of Niantic's legal department, and I work with Pokemon Go. Hi, I'm Tian. I'm a marketing manager on the live events team here at Niantic. Hi, I'm Liz, Manager of Community and Social at Niantic for Pokemon Go. Hi, I'm Laura. I'm a Senior Game Designer on Pokemon Go. I'm Michael, Director of Marketing and Live Events at Niantic. The Live Events team is in charge of putting together all of the pieces, uh, from conceptualization uh, all the way down to execution, and making sure that every team within Niantic is aligned and all set uh, to put together the best experience possible for players. To accomplish that, uh, we're responsible for communicating between all the departments, uh, keeping in mind the overall goals of the GoFest experience and what we want fans to take away at the end of the day. We started things off this year working with our game design team to figure out uh, what the player experience was going to be like uh, and how we could adapt some of the traditional in-person GoFest elements like habitats uh, into something that's a little bit more dispersed uh, and global in nature. A key part of any GoFest is a team lounge experience. This year, we've looked to create a virtual team lounge, uh, which you may be in right now watching this video. Um, and we're hoping that you can come to this virtual team lounge to relax, um, win some prizes, answer some trivia, and feel the GoFest spirit. Taking the Pokemon Go Fest global this year actually opened up quite a few opportunities that we've never been able to tap into before. For example, for the first time ever, we were able to create a two-day Go Fest experience. So what was really fun for us to think about this year was, how can we create a two-day experience that was unique each day and was full of surprises that trainers can uh, enjoy over the course of an entire weekend? For GoFest this year, I've been working with our uh, game design, engineering, art, and other teams to put together a play at home or play wherever you are experience that uh, trainers all over the globe can enjoy. One of the pieces that we are most excited and most proud of this year is the Global Challenge Arena. Uh, hopefully everybody's had a chance to participate already, but it was really important for us to come up with a way for everybody around the, the world, really, to feel connected and contributing to these uh, massive goals. This will be the first time ever inside Pokemon Go where you can track that progress. Another smaller piece that I'm really proud of because I got to work on it very, very closely is a small ticker saying who's playing now. And you get to see all of the different cities that are currently actively participating in the challenge and contributing. So being able to show which cities we're playing at the same time, as well as you may have noticed we've got some social media images from our trainers coming through inside the app as well. Um, all of these were sort of initiatives that, uh, to make people feel more connected on a global scale. And we're, we're really happy the way that everything's come together. As a UX designer, uh, myself and my team touch every aspect of the game from swiping a Pokestop and getting items to throwing a Pokeball, uh, catching Pokemon, battling and raids and PVP. Uh, pretty much everything you see uh, that you interact with. 
This year for GoFest, I designed the UX around the challenge arena um, found in your Today View. I wanted to feel like the entire Pokemon Go community was coming together for GoFest um, to collaborate in uh, online challenges. I thought that uh, showing players that all these countries were playing would be a nice way to show that uh, and also uh, show them a list of, uh, of their friends that were also participating in the challenges and get a good sense of the uh, impact that like, oh, we're all playing together, like Pokemon Go. A technical program manager works with uh, engineers, tech artists, product managers, marketing, ensuring that the engineering team has no obstacles. We have to make sure we've got the appropriate bandwidth for all of those users and that they can feel like they are playing together and they can see their friends playing with them and catching and doing GoFest right along with them. As a TPM, you know, we're working to ensure that our players really enjoy this game and it's easy for them to download and use and play and share with others. So what I did for GoFest was create the map effects. So that includes the um, grass type, fire type, water type, uh, and the Raid and Friendship Hour. The Pokemon Go map is such an iconic part of the game and there's so much visual information that the players take in. So as a designer, we have to be really careful finding that right balance between the making the map effects exciting and not making them distracting. Working on a project like GoFest involves a lot of different teams. We talk a lot with products, we talk a lot with game design, we talk a lot with the artists. We all come together on you know, a plan and a, a spec for how we want the GoFest features to operate. We had to really think about the, the design and how we wanted to structure the code in order to be able to facilitate such a large scale feature. Um, and it really took a lot of conversations with back and forths with game design and with the UX team to really figure out and nail down like what what gets to the core and the essence of a feature but also allows us to ship on time and and still make the experience really fun and magical for our players. QA is quality assurance. Uh, we're responsible for making sure that the product matches the product spec and that we can find as many bugs as possible before release. So for GoFest, that means that we are making sure that the effects that you're seeing, that the quests are being completed, that the build is working exactly the way that it's intended to work and that you have the best experience possible. When we start work on a key art piece for something as big as GoFest, um, first we think about obviously the location and then we think about the Pokemon that we wanna feature the type of accurate environment uh, that they live in. And then we start to composite all kinds of photography, sometimes our own photos, a lot of stock photos, and then we just have some creativity from there. We also think about some fun little Easter eggs sometimes, like you know, incorporating some hidden Pokemon or a fun little fact. But yeah, it's a lot of work that goes in, but it turns out to be a really fun image at the end. The marketing team at Niantic for Pokemon Go basically oversees any and all external communications for the game, whether you're looking in the game at our in-game news or our large campaigns that we run, like the Team Rocket takeovers, or even the different various events we run throughout the world. Anything that we do on the marketing team is a huge group collaboration. Within Niantic, we'll do a lot of brainstorming as a team. We'll come up with ideas across the board. We'll work with the Pokemon company on how we create a story arc to a campaign that makes sense. I'll tend to think through how all the different pieces are fitting together strategically, and also how we make something that's going to hit our product goals at the same time as building something that's on brand. 
So what do we do for Pokemon Go Fest? Well, we do a lot of things, but you know, TLDR, um, our job is to really take in that experience that our players are having on the ground during Pokemon Go Fest and creating a campaign that translates the same feeling, the same energy to our trainers who are following us on our social media pages. Overall, we just really want to encourage, you know, trainers to connect with one another through our social media. So by participating in this live stream, y'all are doing just that and we totally thank you for it. Um, but definitely do me a quick favor. If you have some spare time right now, go to your favorite social media platform and share out what, you know, like what Pokemon Go Fest 2020 means to you or what are some of your favorite catches of the day or, or you know, have, did you make a new friend or maybe you have a Go snapshot that you wanna um, share out. Who knows, maybe you'll see uh, that post on our social media page or in the app itself. This year, since Go Fest is happening all around the world, um, we are trying our best to replicate that help desk experience and bringing it to you through our in-app support. To ensure you have the smoothest GoFest experience possible, we've staffed up our team to provide additional support coverage. You can always contact us in-app via the settings menu or on Twitter at Niantic Help. I'm personally excited about the print at home kit and I, I like the idea of us being able to bring, you know, GoFest to our homes and, you know, anywhere we are. So I just am I'm personally excited uh, that we get to display our Pokemon Go spirit to everyone out there. I'm really excited to see how trainers come together and, and to see them, you know, really have a lot of fun with this feature and, you know, get to experience all the different little, uh, little goodies that we put in there for y'all. I had a lot of fun making the effects and I'm just really excited to see how people react to them. <laughs> I was most excited to see the habitats come to life um, and seeing all the great design work the team has done to really make this an amazing experience. The thing I'm most excited about for Pokemon Go Fest 2020 are all the fun surprises that we've baked into this event experience. Um, something we really pride ourselves in is being able to reveal just tidbits of the event uh, but wait for players to actually be immersed in the experience before they can discover everything that we had planned. This year's Pokemon Go Fest was a huge cross-functional effort across so many different teams in Niantic. Uh, I can't wait for you all to see what's coming tomorrow, uh, and I hope that you enjoy the rest of your Pokemon Go Fest experience. so much for tuning in trainers. It was awesome for us to have a chance to share with you the work that it takes to go into Pokemon Go Fest. We hope you got to learn a little bit today about how we make Go Fest happen. And I'm so grateful to the entire team for working so hard on it. And we can't wait for you all to enjoy it this year. Signing off from San Francisco, I'm Liz. Signing off from Seattle, I'm Laura. From all of us at Niantic, we hope you have an amazing Pokemon Go Fest. And let's go. Hi trainers, I hope your GoFest is going smoothly and safely. My name is Craig and I'm one of the designers here at Niantic, and today I'm going to be going over the process of creating your own print at home gift. In the PDF that we sent out, you should find one page that is the actual gift, and another page that is the instructions. Now the video today is going to be cut up and kind of sped up, so it might be kind of hard to follow along, but you should be able to view it at another time. So, let's begin. Okay, so I've cleared my workspace and I have my scissors and I have my tape at the ready. Put those to the side for right now. And, okay. I have my printout. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut everything out of the paper. And we're gonna start with the yellow top right here. Now I'm gonna be folding along these edges right here. And what makes it easiest is when you're folding that you line up this bottom edge with that edge. You can go to corner to corner to be able to get a, uh, a nice fold and do the next fold. And again, I'll line up the uh, corners here and here. Again, lining up the corner and the corner. And the inside flap doesn't matter so much on the angle. So when you're looking at this paper craft, you'll notice that some of these portions have these uh, striped lines on them. So that'll indicate that it actually goes on the inside. And I'll take my tape and pull out a strip about like an inch or an inch and a half. And then I'll tape it on the inside here. And I'll line up my edge. You can line up the art together, that usually helps. 
make sure it's taped. And there's the top portion. So we'll put that aside for right now. Base is going to be a little more complex, a few more folds and taping is a little on the trickier side. But I'll start with uh, this triangle here and I'll work my way to the bottom of the base. Again, this little triangle has cross lines on it that indicate that it goes on the inside. And similar to the top, I can look at the corners and I can look at the edge and I can line those up to then make my fold, a smaller fold on the uh, edge of the gift. Do the same thing for the next fold. Line up the edge. Line up the corner, fold the long ways. And the same thing here, line it up. And the long fold. Okay, uh, we're going to get our tape again and get a small piece of tape. And we're going to tape the inside of the little triangle that has the lines on it. I'm going to loop around so that it tapes to the other side. Now the next part I'm going to have uh, three pieces of tape. But again, about like an inch and a half to two inches. First bit of tape. And I'm going to fold it. Like so. And I'll place it in one of the corners right here. And this part's a little tricky. Once you have uh, one side started, it can make the... Uh, other side's a little easier. Take my second piece of tape and I'll fold it. I'll place it on one of the sides. Like so. And remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. We're not here to win any uh, beauty awards. And uh, I'll take this tape, I'll put it in the side. And the other good thing about Papercraft is that if you screw up, you can just paint it again. There you go. And we're gonna get this small little strip right here and we're going to roll this piece of paper onto itself and again you'll see that there's uh, some stripes right here it'll go on the inside and the art of it should be able to line up on the opposing angle um, it does help if you kind of roll it a little bit on your finger and then tape it so since we've completed uh, this portion we can move on to the bow and with the white facing down I'm going to put it on the back side of the bow. And I'll put my first piece of tape right here. And I'll put my second piece of tape on the underside, on the opposing corner to it. Okay. And now we have the bow. And next up is going to be uh, these two pieces, which are the cellophane that goes around the gift. You'll notice that this one has a, a larger kind of triangle in the front and these have smaller triangle art in the back. Seeing this large one, it tells you that it's going to be in the front and these ones are going to be in the back. So I can start with the one on the front and I'm going to fold uh, this line right here away from me and I'm going to keep changing the fold direction as I work my way down to create like a fan look. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, this one in particular, when you start folding it, it's going to want to start to fight as it gets to this edge right there. But when it all comes together, it's going to look pretty good. That's the first piece. And we'll kind of put that to the side for right now, and we'll start working on the second piece. This one I'll start by folding it toward me. So I'm gonna take my two pieces, and I'm going to flip over the front one so I'm seeing the back, and I'll keep the back one so it's facing forward. I'll get a about half inch of tape or so. And I'll tape the inside. And I'll take the back piece. And I'll tape it edge to edge. So now I have my two pieces joined like this. So I'll get another piece of tape. About that big. And I'm gonna flip the front over the back. And I'll tape back edge to the front. Again, lining up the edges and corners so that looks good. Now that we have the uh, this little completed paper wrap, we're going to take the bow and we can put the paper wrap inside the, the bow here. And we'll put our top right here and we'll put our base right here. And I'm going to take another piece of tape and if I look at the front of this, you'll see that there is little lights. So those little lights are going to go on the right hand side. So I'm going to take my, my bow and my wrapper. I'm going to feed it into the hole right here. 
And we'll make sure the front is facing to this corner. And I'll take the I'll take the little paper tabs inside and I'll hold it with one finger and then I'll take the tape and I'll tape the inside here. And you can adjust the wrapper and adjust the bow so it's a little more straight. Take your face and put it on top. And there you have it. Thanks for tuning in to see how I made this. And if you do make your own and you want to share it to social media, make sure to use the hashtag PokemonGoFest2020. That way I'll be able to check it out. And from my family to yours, bye. Pokemon Go today. Join us for Pokemon Go Fest.